Ahead tonight, officers sharpening their skills in the global fight on crime. That story is coming up. Another officer relieved of his duties today. We'll tell you why. Plus, tomorrow makes one year since the PLP's victory at the polls. We've got reaction. The National Report starts now. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This segment of the news is brought to you by BTC, powered by Lime. Good evening, everyone. I'm Candino Knowles. And I'm Charisma Robinson, sitting in for Keishla Adderley. It's good to have you joining us. Well, organized crime is not something that's limited to one country or jurisdiction. And with this in mind, the International Criminal Police Organization, or Interpol, engaged its sixth session of its capacity building program on organized crime this afternoon. The official session kicked off at the Paul Farkasin Conference Center in Nassau. Jiminita Swain sat in and filed this report. The Bahamas is considered a hot transit sport for drug and arms trafficking as well as human smuggling. And in an effort to combat transnational crimes, authorities are teaming up with foreign counterparts in this global fight. That's where Interpol comes in. The International Criminal Police Organization is equipping officers from the Caribbean and Latin America with the skills to tackle organized crime head on. During the launch of the Interpol conference on Monday, National Security Minister Dr. Bernard Nottage touched on the drug trafficking issue, saying this problem should not be underestimated. They are determined to go on pouring drugs onto the world market through established channels and through new ones. They do not care what damage and human tragedies they cause. Their motive is money, and they will stop at nothing to get it. It is this great danger which makes everything we do including the training this session, even more urgent. Participants taking part in the training hailed from Anguilla, Belize, Costa Rica, the Dominican Republic, El Salvador, Jamaica, Montserrat, and Nicaragua. Director of Capacity Building and Training at the Interpol General Secretariat, Dale Sheehan, said the session was the sixth for the year, with more than 140 participants taking part. This program turns training into practice. It is a three-phase approach, training, capacity building, and operations. Some of the recent examples and of successes that we have had here in the Caribbean and in Central America is Operation Icebreaker, where our objectives were to identify and seize shipments of precursor chemicals used for illicit drug manufacturing. By collectively working together, numerous countries seized over $2 million in cash and tons of chemicals that were being used. Sheehan said there are also plans to launch a criminal analysis program in the Caribbean. Commissioner Police Allison Greenslade urged participants to use the skills they will gain to improve on law enforcement practices. I'm pleased to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that 190 countries linked through Interpol's Secure Communications Network is a formidable arsenal of law enforcement databases and tools which give law enforcement across the globe the ability to interdict organized crime wherever it occurs. Participants, these tools will be shared with you. Minister Nottage said there is a need for continued and enhanced regional communication, coordination and exchange of information among law enforcement authorities in the region. Jiminita Swain, SNS Network News. The police force is one officer short tonight after Commissioner of Police Ellison Greenslade dismissed a police constable this afternoon for an undisclosed reason. Deputy Commissioner Quinn McCartney telling reporters today that he was not at liberty to discuss what offense the officer committed, but said he'd been on the force for more than five years. This latest firing comes on the heels of other officers being dismissed from the force in recent times. Police under his authority under the Police Force Act 2009, discharge an officer from the Royal Bahamas Police Force for a breach of our discipline. Um, as you know, there are a number of major and minor offenses in the Police Act and regulations that deal with discipline. Uh, we are one of the few officers that are uh, organizations that are required to police ourselves. 
um, but the Police Act and our regulations give a whole gamut of offences in which our officers can be disciplined and that can include dismissal. So this afternoon the Commission had to dismiss one of our officers because of a breach of discipline. And so I just want to appeal to our members of our, the Royal Bahamas Police Force to continue to abide by the rules and regulations. We are here to enforce the laws of the Bahamas and should not be bre breaking those laws. He would have gone before our Court of Inquiry Tribunal. He would have pled guilty to the offence and it was recommended that he be dismissed and the Commissioner took that recommendation and, and acted on it. Any member of our organisation who goes afoul of the law, any member of our organisation who turns, um, who breaches our discipline is a concern to us. And so, like I say, we are very, very concerned and we want to make the call again to our officers to remember that we are here to enforce the laws. Minister responsible for the National Insurance Board, Shane Gibson, says he's disappointed that portions of that NIB audit report have been leaked to the media. In previous interviews, Minister Gibson claimed that only four people had the report in their possession and knew the information contained. But here's what the National Insurance Board Minister told reporters in front of the House of Assembly this morning. At the time I said that um, Cargill and his lawyers didn't have the report yet and the NIB board members uh, didn't have a copy of the report yet. Um, since that time, I think last week, uh, either Wednesday or Thursday, we would have sent a full copy of the report to Mr. Cargill and his lawyer. And on Friday, I think we gave all of the board members uh, copies, uh, full copies of the report. Now, Minister Gibson hinted that he's still not sure when the report will be officially published. He maintains that he's still being guided by his advisors. I was hoping that we, were, we would have been able to get through this entire process um, as anticipated by us and as uh, advised by my advisors. Um, unfortunately, that wasn't the case. But, you know, um, we launched investigations in the past trying to determine who released certain information. Um, we have not been successful in uh, identifying those persons and, um, you know, it's, it's disappointing, but just one of those things that happens. Tomorrow will mark the Progressive Liberal Party's first anniversary in office since the 2012 general elections. The party won a solid majority in a landslide victory, taking 29 of the 38 seats in Parliament. The Free National Movement secured nine. Members of the Democratic National Alliance, the Bahamas Constitution Party, and a number of independents were not successful in making it to the halls of Parliament. Now many of the PLP's candidates are new to the political arena and some not so new. We talked to a few of them today. Well, I've found that it has, it has caused me to bring out the skills of chairmanship and skills of mediation, arbitration, and, and, gen, and generally being a good referee. So overall it's been a wonderful experience. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. There are many things that I would like to, to, to do differently. Made some mistakes, yes, and I will continue to grow and learn, and it's been a wonderful experience. Yes. So my first year has been a tremendous one. I've I learned a lot. I've worked with some very smart, dedicated uh, people um, who are interested in the welfare of our kids. And I'm very satisfied as we move into the second year that you're going to see uh, tremendous leaps and bounds as far as our progress is concerned in education. So I'm, I'm very satisfied. We've gotten this hurdle over. Uh, my next phase is jobs, jobs, jobs. So this next year of the PLP administration, you'll see now concentration on jobs for myself as a Minister of Youth. I'll be focusing on youth unemployment. Uh, we have two innovative programs that people will hear about in about six weeks, and we're going to attack youth unemployment head on. What has Daniel Johnson learned as Minister and Member of Parliament? Uh, take your time and get it right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, I have been very quiet uh, this year, haven't spoken out much, and that's because I've been more in the trenches making sure that we better the lives of the Bahamian people. Meantime, Chairman of the Progressive Liberal Party, Bradley Roberts, is weighing in on the government's first year in office. During an interview with ZNS News today, Mr. Roberts outlined some of the government's accomplishments over the past year and also about their plans moving forward. In restoring the economy, the Prime Minister moved quickly in letting the international investment community know that the Bahamas was open for business. There will be full employment on Bimini this year with the Gantin Group and Marina. The transformation of the reef village in Freeport will begin shortly. Several small properties are opening and are being constructed in Elutra. Final approval for the $220 million PGA village on Cat Island will be concluded this week. 
and there are, are active negotiations on projects for other islands, such as Abaco. The government is indeed moving quickly and working assiduously in stimulating the economy and creating jobs for our people. The Prime Minister has done more to get new direct investment in this country than the FNM did in five years, and he's just getting started. Legislation has been tabled in Parliament for the establishment of a national training academy that will ha have the mandate of matching the skill sets of the country with the labor demands of our economy. This is very different from the FNM 52-week training program. The last unemployment report in February in November of 2012 indicated a decline of 1%. It will get better, and I can assure you. The Democratic National Alliance giving its year-in-review report on the government ahead of the PLP's one-year anniversary since taking office back on May 7th. DNA leader Branville McCartney affirmed his party's hope for the country under PLP leadership, and he called for a greater focus on nation-building. Mr. McCartney did have some concerns, citing crime as the major challenge facing the government. But he questioned the government's insistence that crime is down and gave this advice on tackling the problem. Yes, I do hear the minister speak about statistics, that the crime level has decreased. But I do challenge this government and that minister in particular to verify which areas of crime he speaks to. As long as the Bahamian people have the fear of crime, statistics, Mr. Minister, is not sufficient. We call on the government to declare war on crime. We ask them to sweat the small stuff. We ask the government to ensure that the criminally minded will recognize that there will be consequences for their actions. Debate on the Majority Rule Bill continuing in the House of Assembly today. If passed, Majority Rule Day will become a public holiday. Members of the governing side, including Seabreeze Member of Parliament Hope Strawn and Bamu Town MP Renwood Wells noted the importance of the day and both agreed it should be commemorated as such in honor of Bahamians that fought to bring about change in this country. Beyond any, any, any other nationality in this country as it relates being able to imply, to provide employment for, our, for, for, for the country. And so, Mr. Speaker, we have to take up the mantle. Majority, the, the, the men of, uh, of the day for majority rule, they achieved what they set out to do. They achieved majority rule for us. We, we, we obtained self-determination from the 1950s and 1960s. Now it is our job to face the challenges of our day, to meet it head on, to define solutions for our people. And the main, the main, the two-headed monster, the two-headed monster which we must fight, Mr. Speaker, is crime and unemployment. And we must not allow others outside to set the conversation for us on this issue. We must take charge of it. We must imbue our citizens with the confidence to know that they have the ability. They are, not, they are no less educated than many in the in the other major countries of this of this country, as I, uh, of countries of the world, as I have demonstrated through our literacy rate, and in fact, many of the countries where we look for uh, for, for uh, migrant workers, we have a much higher literacy rate, and so it shows that we have the capability. And so, 40 years, 40 years into independence, Mr. Speaker, we must recognize Majority Rule Day by creation of this holiday. For sure, we must do that. We must honor the men and women who were integral in this struggle in this struggle by protecting our citizens, Mr. Speaker, against criminals and criminal activity. We must honor them. We must honor them not only with this holiday, but we must honor them by protecting our citizens. In our first look at weather, the weather radar is showing dry conditions throughout the 700 islands. But outside of our studios just now, we have near clear skies, temperatures 79 degrees, your relative humidity 58%. Winds out of the north northeast at 6 knots, your barometric pressure 1,015.0 millibars. That's 29.97 inches, and it is steady. But stay tuned. Temperatures around the Fondby Islands, travel and boating forecast is still to come.
Well, still to come in the Bahamas tonight, we've got more testimony in the Kofi Goodman murder trial today. And a happy ending to a story. We'll tell you more when the Bahamas tonight continues. This portion of the news is brought to you by Lux Men's Warehouse.